to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Noor. Today, we're going to discuss pathways to an esports career. My guest is esports thought leader, Danny Martin, the CEO and co founder of Exposure. Welcome, Danny. Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of this particular podcast. It's engaging to be able to talk to individuals about esports. Fantastic. Okay, so what is Exposure? So Exposure is a technology esports company that focuses on providing a pipeline for talent, for careers, for corporate entities, institutions, and individuals who are aspiring to be esports pros. All right, let's show the video. Is your pathway to pro. So, Danny, what career opportunities are there in esports? Wow, that's a really, really awesome question. And the, the fact that is, there's five segments in esports that we coined. There's marketing esports, management esports, production in esports, technology in esports, and the competition element of esports. And in each of those segments, there are so many career opportunities uh, within them. So let's break it down from a management perspective. You have you know, general managers of esports organizations, you have founders, um, you have individuals who uh, engage with building out technology companies in regards to uh, that of uh, the management sector. And when it comes down to marketing, you have CMOs and marketing strategies and social media um, you know, directors, when it comes down to, you have, you have to have publicists and PR companies. When it comes down to the actual technology aspect, you have ATEM directors and individuals who operate that of OBS and Streamlab and vMix and the individuals who are creating the equipment that allows the actual events to take place. And when you break it down to the competitive standpoint, you have the, the athletes that are competing on a daily basis from a professional and aspiring gaming perspective. And then all the way to that of the the uh, production perspective. So you have, you know, ATM directors, like I stated, and then you also have, when it comes down to like marketing, management, production technician, and then also the competition element. So each segment has several career opportunities that are involved in it. And I've been really fortunate to have a lot of those people and those people careers on my show. And um, so how does Exposure help people uh, get into a career in sports? Yeah, so we really started from an organic standpoint. Like when I was in college, I was running tournaments, I was uh, fixing consoles and just understood the fact that if you run a tournament, you can allow the gamers to come in to showcase their skills. So that's number one. That's the first organic way of, you know, helping individuals showcase their skills so they can be on the top of the leader charts and ultimately obtain a, a job as a competitive gamer. And then we quickly recognize that, you know, if more people know us as helping professional gamers, because at this point, we have over eight gamers that have turned pro. One of those gamers, Dayfry, $1.4 million prize first, 
winner along with his team and, you know, NBA 2K League champion, who who's not going to say, hey, I want to be in that same position just as much. And so when people ask us, it's like, OK, well, we can help you. But then we got to recognize like, OK, well, you need branding. You need to understand how to utilize your social media. You need to understand, you know, where to go in regards to travel and your budget and accounting. You know, you need a lawyer. You know, you need you need, you need someone to be able to look over your contracts. And so for us as an entity, we just naturally started doing that for competitors because we really want to see them in higher lights. And then we recognize that, you know, those career opportunities, those could be a feelable amongst individuals who are tenured in their backgrounds or individuals who are coming out of high school or college. And so ultimately we just went out and started to find individuals that can help us fulfill the needs and the goals of the competitive gamers, the individuals who are aspiring to turn pro. So we just organically done it. And to the points where it's like, wow, this is a business model, right? We're ultimately being able to help the, you know, the, the companies find talent. We're also helping the actual competitive gamers brand themselves better while at the same time providing opportunities for the individuals who are looking to support those aspiring gamers by way of their services. Sure. And I'm a lawyer and an esports mediator as well. So, uh, you know, I definitely understand that. And, but, you know, it's interesting in this environment where there's such a need for employees. Have you found that uh, esports companies are seeking employees? Yeah, it's, um, it's even a higher need even at this point. Just kind of think about COVID. You know, COVID from the esports and gaming industry was one of those things where it's like, it forced individuals to learn about esports and gaming and technology due to the fact that everybody was at home. Now, when you look at it from a founder perspective, or let me take that back, a VC perspective, or a angel investor, or someone is looking to start a company, they have to fulfill talent. You know, they got to. You can think, you can have an idea, but you actively need individuals to help you push that all the way through to the finish line. And so when you think about it, you know, if you don't have anywhere to go to find the talent, then it becomes this big bubble, which ultimately if that bubble will per- burst to the point to where if you if you can't find the people that can support you, you're literally, you're literally like, OK, like like I, 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 I'm I am I don't want to do this anymore. It's, I'm losing capital It's not fulfilling as I thought. And that's something that we just don't want to see. Right. So from our perspective, it's filling that pipeline of talent by allowing individuals to showcase what's on their skill sets, what's on their portfolio. uh, So therefore it can help the individuals who have been interested in getting into this space because the fulfillment of talent is, 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 is a hard thing within this industry because there's not a lot of resources out there to identify where is the talent. I know for, for a good minute, you know, when I, as you know, building a company, I would look at, you know, Hitmarker, right? Hitmarker is our way to find that of esports talent, but it's only Hitmarker. If you think of outside of the industry, you have Monster, you got Indie, you got you got so many pipelines and pathways to find talent, and the esports gaming industry just didn't have that side. And ultimately, now you're starting to see more companies that are developing that pipeline, and that's where we fall at because we've seen that it was an incredible need, right? It was a credible need that needed to be fulfilled. Sure. And let's talk about your program. Now, you have a physical space in Dallas. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Definitely. It's okay. in. Uh, yes, definitely in Dallas. Uh, we've had multiple spaces that we built out. We're actually building out a brand new facility um, in the Duncanville, Texas, which is the southern sector of Dallas. And we're so anxious uh, to be inside of this space because just like the space that you're seeing right now, it's where we did our educational esports program. So tell us about your immersive experience. That sounds really valuable. Yeah, I think it's because, you know, once after once COVID hit, you know, the need for actual space was like, wow, we can't we can't do anything in this space. So we ultimately had to create a technology platform and utilize the space to create content. So we broke down all five segments, management, marketing, technology, competition and production, and we created over 20 videos per that of topic per that of segment and was like, okay, now we need somewhere to store it, you know? And if we have, if we're a tech company, let's build our own learning management system. And so what we did was we stored that content on there and provided that to uh, institutions and schools to allow them to learn about esports. And then we quickly recognized that once you learn, you're like, okay, what's next? You know, like, okay, what's next? And so we were just like, we got to figure out how to make the experience more immersive 
uh, for the students. And so we actively was like, okay, how do we actively allow the students who've learned to really start to apply, right? That's the biggest thing. As a, as a founder, I look for individuals who have done it. When people come to me, they're like, hey, I want to get in esports. And they're like, I'm passionate about esports. The next question for me is like, okay, what have you done in esports, right? Because that helps me really identify how much time is going to take before you actually are able to acquire the skills to help us return revenue to sustain our business. So I naturally have those perspectives. And I know many other companies would have that same type of thought process. And so giving the students an immersive experience is very critical to the success of that student. So for our immersion program, we were just like, what are we going to do to be able to bring education and entertainment together? And we were just like, okay, the students have to learn, then how would they apply? And as an esports company that focuses on comp competitive uh, comp like competition, like true live competition and have esports players that are actively trying to go pro, we were just like, well, we got to give them a fan base while at the same time giving the students an opportunity to really apply their skill set. So we were just like, we have to create a program. So what we did was we built our technology platform solely focusing on our immersion, uh, uh, immersion program. We call it the Exposure EDE Esports Immersion Program. And so what we end up doing is allowing the students to facilitate a four-week program. That first week, the students are utilizing our learning management system to actively go through that of uh, the management, marketing, technology, competition, and production, and take some assessments just so they can get acclimated to the industry. By that second week, the students are breaking up into groups of five. So if we have 25 students per actual institution, you've got five groups. Each student pairs up into a role of a manager, general manager, a head coach, a marketing specialist, a production technician and then also a software developer, right? Because those are just, those are common jobs inside of the esports industry. And then these students are able to collaborate and draft their real esports athletes from our entertainment side. So we have a qualifiers and we do a league where we pick four teams, which is 20 individuals total. And the students get a chance to actually draft by way of the overall scores of each of the actual highly competitive gamers and now they are in the driver's seats of saying i want this person or i want this person on our team so our goal for this program is allow the students to actively build their own esports organization just like your team envies just like your face clans just like your luminosities of the world and we want the students to feel what that feels like while by then the third week they're actively are assigning they're doing their assignments so let's say the head coach is picking, looking at the data of the players. They're picking their players. They're monitoring the data and the performance of each of the players that they pick. The marketing specialist is creating a marketing strategy in which they're utilizing our functionality on our platform, which we call the Ecolab. And it's like an internal social media. So they get to actively take their marketing strategy and apply it in a form of a social media, right? And ultimately, when it comes down to the software developer, in our technology platform, we created a functionality that's a micro website builder. So just like you will use GoDaddy or Squarespace, in our technology platform, you can actively create your own website. So that's, that's like a software developer, right? You don't actively, as a student, you don't actively have to know how to code because that's just where the world is going. Software platforms are making it easier to build your own websites. So we want the students to actively feel like what it's like to build their own websites. And even when it comes down to the general manager, general manager, what do they do? They make sure that everything runs properly. So engaging with all the different roles from underneath or not even underneath alongside of their team, just ensuring that if there are any questions that need to be answered, if there are any uh, any suggestions that need to make, if we're if the if the organization that they've coming together is maintaining their mission and their values, like that's the job of the actual general manager. And every role has a specific assignment by way of the actual program. Let's even break it down to the production technician. Production technician will take clips from the actual players from Twitch and give those clips to the software developer while at the same time giving those clips to the actual marketing, you know, marketing specialist. So therefore they can post it on, on the social media internal. So these students are actively engaging with each other. So therefore they can, by that fourth week, they're looking back and saying, well, we got to present now and they're presenting their esports organization and how they've done as a team. So therefore they can be able to showcase their, their website. And guess what? By the end of this program, they can take that website and give it to their parents, their teachers, and most importantly, their prospective employers. So what is the general age of those who were involved in your um, program? 
13 to 25, like right now we're really focusing on the high schools because in this industry, high school students have two choices to make once they graduate. They go into the workforce or they go to college, right? We want to make sure that, that that option is viable on both ends. Everybody do not have the resources to spend a lot of money in college. While at the same time, some individuals may have the opportunities to obtain a scholarship in esports or gaming or technology or any other field. So we want them to be equipped no matter what decision that they make. And that's one of the biggest focal points for us is high school students. Now, you may have some brainiac middle school students, which we will love. And you may have some individuals that are in college or even outside of college that are looking to engage in this industry by actively having something on their portfolio. Because that's all it takes. It's just what experience should you have, whether it's a little experience or whether it's a lot of experience. We just want to give experience. And from there, you can spread your rings and grow as fast or as slow as you want to. You know, I would think that even people that might be older than 25 might be interested in it because it, you know, there's so much interest in this area. Yes. Um, so is is the program presented in person or virtually or a combination? Yes, that's pretty awesome. Um, it's all virtual. Now, the cool thing is that students all across the actual world can participate in our program. We do it every month. So July 12th is our first public date. And so it starts from July 12th for a whole month, for four weeks. And then it's, we start a whole new cycle the next month. We're going to do this month after month after month throughout the whole year. Now, the cool thing that we're experiencing is because we have a facility on that third week, the students who are locally based, they're, they will get bus to our facility and go through our facility and look at an esports organization as it's running while they'll be able to get to sit in the stands and see the players that they pick in real time. So it gives a perspective for a student to look like, you know, if they're in the, if they're a general manager in their box office like Jerry Jones, and they get to watch how their team is performing in real time. So that's the benefit of being locally based uh, for our, our ISDs in this area. They just get to come on that third week and see it. If you're not locally based, then on that third week, you're watching the production live via that of Twitch. So what's the cost of this program and are there any scholarships? Yeah, so there's so there's two elements on the cost. So it's $300 uh, for the for the program if you just want to go through the one month experience. It's $600 for the program if you want to go through the one month experience plus that of have 12 months of access to the technology platform after that. Meaning any updates, any new content, uh, any new functionality that we build into the site, you'll have access to that. So we really try to make it to where it's similar to that of a program, like a summer program, where you know the students will actively or the youth uh, would actively enroll in a one month program or so, um, whether it's basketball or football or soccer or any type of thing. Like we really wanted to make it comparable to that. Um, and then also from a scholarship perspective, we're engaging with that of corporate entities that actively want to engage and add value to that of uh, to that of the students. And they are actively giving scholarships from that perspective. I know for July 12th, we are interacting with the entity by the name of Four Oak Cliff, uh, which is a nonprofit organization that works with corporate entities. And they've had several corporate entities provide them with funds in which they can give scholarships to that of the students to participate in our exposure immersion program. So we're definitely open to engage with any entities that want to be able to give back and just being able to provide a student with a, a scholarship to our program would mean the world to that student. So we're open up, we're open to it. Um, we're actively engaging with corporate entities uh, as part of our exposure for all foundation. Like literally, this is a great opportunity because everybody, we all know, you know, 300, 600, you know, it, some people may just not afford it, right? And so ultimately we know we just want to make sure that we still make that available to individuals. But most importantly, we want it to be a value. We really wanted to make sure that when someone leaves this, they have something tangible that they can go with. You know, a great, it's a certificate is great, but when you actually are able to combine a certificate with an actual experience with something on your portfolio, it's even better when it comes down. It's just like icing on a cake. Um, and it makes it more attractive to that of employers when it comes down to hiring. Sure, I think that this is really valuable for employers. I would think employers would want to send people there for education. Yes, and for sure. So uh, I do have a question from a viewer, um, and this is kind of about burnout. Do you think burnout in esports jobs is less 
equal or greater than with regular, um, you know, other types of industries? Um, right now, the industry, and I want to make sure that I catch this right, but right now, the esports and gaming industry, well, esports industry, the jobs are not as not as available as other industries. And it's just because of the infancy of the industry. But ultimately, when you look at the stats and the data, the actual jobs in esports are growing double each year, right? So if it's 6,000 jobs right now, guess what? It's going to be 12,000 jobs and 24,000 jobs. And then it's going to compound like that. And even with COVID, there's even more companies that are or that are developing within this space because of the attractiveness of it. And esports is actively helping the gaming industry just as much. And the gaming industry is really, really massive when it comes down to it. You know, so ultimately, when you think about that and you look at an esports entity or industry being a $1.5 to $2 billion industry, and you're looking at, you know, a gaming industry being, you know, 200 to 300,000, 300 million dollar, uh, 300 billion dollar industry, you know, you're seeing that there are way more opportunities in the actual gaming space. But the cool thing about gaming in esports is that the skill sets that are developed in these industries are applicable to any industry. Right. And that's what we like to talk to students and parents and, you know, stakeholders about is like, you know, you don't actively have to be in the industry of esports and gaming if you don't want to. But the skill set that you're building within here is fun and engaging. But the skill sets that you're building are applicable to any industry. So the jobs that are available now, it opens you up to many because I can guarantee you employers, they want to see skill sets and that's collaborative. That's creative thinking, that's, you know, socializing, that's understanding the impact of personality, that's understanding the, the concept of organization. So the skill set that you or competition is really big. So the skill set that you are learning in gaming and esports can still open you up to so many other career opportunities that are out there. You're just not limited to gaming and esports. What advice do you have for people who want to try and break into the esports industry? Get out there. I can tell you from experience, it's, I know a lot of people say just get out there, but it really is so true for me in the industry, getting in there and being interested was like, I would travel all around, you know, drive my truck or car miles and hundreds of miles and thousands of miles just to go to events and watch what's transpiring in these events from, you know, Call of Duties to the NBA 2Ks. And I would just watch everything that's going on in these tournaments. And I will see the tournament organizer. I'll watch, I'll see somebody monitoring the brackets. I'll see the competitors gaming. I'll see the sponsors. I'll see the, the vendors at the tournaments. I will see the, you know, the ticket booth. I'll see the venues and how they make capital. And ultimately you just go around, you ask like, you know, do you need some help? You know, like, how can I help, right? And when you go in and make those friendships and those partnerships, then you start to build your portfolio where somebody's for the next tournament or next event, they say, hey, I remember this guy. He was a cool individual. He helped me. I have, so I have a budget now. You know, would you mind helping me for this tournament? And then you do that job and then it comes with another job. So ultimately, it's just about getting into the space and really adding, you know, whatever you can, you know, because everybody has something to offer, and ultimately, you may not get, you know, capital right off top, but as you start to build your portfolio, you will find that you are value and someone will say, hey, I want to pay you for what your value, what you're worth, uh, because ultimately, I want you to do it at the highest level because everybody in this industry is trying to grow and they're trying to get bigger and bigger and offer better and better. And it takes resources to get to that point. And when someone has resources, if you've done a good job of showcasing your portfolio, you can be a part of those resources. So I would say, just get out there and look at it and say, what skill set do you have within yourself that you can add to the industry? Okay, before we wrap up, I'd like to show that second video. Yes, for sure.
uh, people with felony convictions in Florida faced a lifetime ban from voting. And what that meant was that the communities that they lived in had less and less political capital. You know what I'm saying? And throughout the duration of the stream, we're gonna be posting links so people can go out there and let their voices be heard. Absolutely. We're giving everybody the opportunity to register to vote if you haven't already. Have you registered to vote this year, Wayno? Everything overnight, right? Like, you have to really have a plan as far as whether it's um, equipment gathering or purchasing or just, to Wayne's point, reinvesting. I hope people, after hearing you talk about exposure, that it, it draws people to your company. How can people uh, get in touch with you or, or find out more? Yeah, so, you know, we just try to be as, as open and, you know, organic and authentic as a company. So we utilize as many channels as possible when it comes down to Facebook, uh, exposure, Instagram, exposure, GG. You know, even Twitch when you go to Exposure Studios. So ultimately, we love to be able to utilize any channel when it comes down to what we do. You know, based off of just even looking at that video, the people behind the scenes are students. They are part of our company. And it just can show you how much opportunity that they've been able to provide on their portfolio. Could you imagine someone in high school working with the New York Giants, right? And able to put the New York Giants on their portfolio as a graphic designer or as, you know, a videographer. This is the opportunities that we provide as an esports organization. And we advise any entity out there to provide those exact same entities and opportunities. And, you know, Catherine, you're doing that exact same thing right now by providing a platform for individuals to be able to speak their truths, their passion. And it's amazingly awesome to be able to be on this podcast to talk with you. Well, thank you so much, Danny. We've learned a lot and I can't wait to see your new space. <laughs> It's going to be um, awesome. <laughs> all right. Anyway, thank you to the viewer who has sent in the question. And thank you uh, for joining us today. Make sure to tune in next week. My guest will be Amanda Solomon, the CEO of Iris TV, a gaming talent management agency. See you then.